I paid a grand total of £45 for this Nintendo Switch Lite off of eBay. And as you can see, it looks like it's been through the wars. Look at this poor thumbstick. The listing states, does not turn on, you will receive console and original box. It won't lie have the box. And it's my job to see if we can get this working and then sell it on eBay for a nice little profit, hopefully. The screen is actually in okay condition. The right analog stick looks a little bit chewed up like somebody got hungry. And interestingly, we're missing the serial number. In some occasions, that can actually mean that the console has been banned on the Nintendo Switch network and therefore you can't access the store. Hopefully that's not the case with this one. We have no SD card and we also have no game card. Interestingly, the charging port on this doesn't look that great. Usually we'd get our trusty old friend, the ammeter, and we'd insert the ammeter into the charging port to see what reading we're getting. And that will kind of give us an indication as to what's wrong with this switch light. Not gonna do that because we know the charging port's bad and I don't wanna short anything out on the inside, making it even worse off than what it currently is. With all that said, let's get inside this switch light and see if we can work out what's going on. Cool, this one is a little bit dusty. Look at that. Jeez. Actually, a really good indication that it's not been opened before, hopefully. Another really good indication that this hasn't been opened before is that the felt, which is linked to the heat sink and sits on top of the fan, hasn't been scratched or taken off. Nice. And here we have the board underneath the scope. And to be honest with you, it's actually a fairly clean board. But let's check the charging port, because I think that's where the issue is. Okay, so it looks like we've got a couple of pins at the top that, I don't know if they've been pushed back. Can you just see how they're quite short? If we look at the other side, that actually looks hunky-dory. All the pins seem to be fine there. Now, what about the actual pins on the port? Are these solid? Yeah, they are solid. Because we've now inspected the port a little bit further, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use my ammeter to see what happens. So let's plug it in. Because it doesn't actually look that bad. Nothing. Let me turn it around and try this side. Nothing as well. So I don't know if those pins have been pushed back which is then causing this not to get the power that it needs to charge or even recognize that there's a charger going into it. Let's just double check the M92 chip, which is here. Here we have the M92 T36 power management IC for the switch light. I've got the meter set to continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when we have a complete circuit. I'm just gonna check for any shorts around M92. Starting with this cap down here, no. These three are usually the culprits to short. Nope, and this one, no, no short. Up here, that's fine. The CPU cap here, fine. Everything seems hunky-dory with this chip. I'm just gonna check the BQ charging chip. I thought that was a crack, but it's a hair. That's meant to be ground, that's good. All fine around BQ as well, interesting. And again, everything else on the board looks fine. Let's just also check the fuse. This is literally above the charging port on the back of the board. That's fine and that cap there is also fine. I'll tell you what then, let's swap out this charging port and see if that can get it working. All right, so we're gonna use a big nozzle tip, the biggest one we have for the Atten ST862D, and the temperatures we're gonna use are 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 50%. Gonna apply our flux. Looks like quite a successful port extraction. We don't have any ripped or torn traces. That's really, really nice. We are just gonna prep a new port just by putting some flux on. Now, typically what I like to do with this is put the iron down to 300 degrees Celsius. That way you don't burn the plastic on the port when you're tinning it with leaded solder. I am, however, using quite a big tip for this, so. and that port is tinned nicely. I was doing it at about 450 degrees Celsius on my iron previously, and I was burning the plastic when I was tinning the port. No wonder. Now, my new favorite method of doing this is putting some flux on and dropping the new port on. I recently done it in a video, and I want to try and perfect it to make my life a little bit easier. So if we just retin the pads with leaded solder, and then if we fill the ground holes also with leaded solder, we should be able to just drop the port on. It gives it a much nicer finish in my opinion and makes the anchoring points so much stronger. That's why I prefer doing it. There we go. I would also give this a quick clean with IPA. Now we're gonna apply flux and I'm also gonna drop the temperature down to 430 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 30%.
Whilst we're here, let's check these. Solid, 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 solid. Solid, 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 solid. Solid, come on. Aha, this one's loose. Solid, okay, so we just need to t touch up this little one here. So what do we do? We're gonna put a tad, tiny bit of flux just there. We've got a really small tip. That's just gonna go from one, just there. And there we go, that should be solid. Check it now, solid. Just check the one next to it as well. This one, solid as well, and that one, good. Nice. Sometimes you can accidentally hit like one of the other ones and make it loose, but not in this case. We are just gonna add some more to the back here, some more solder that is, because it doesn't look the strongest on the back. Here we go, a lot nicer. Now my favorite part, a decent clean with some IPA toothbrush and a cotton swab, let's go. And here we have our port, like the final version of it after a good clean. You can see it slightly tilts down this way a little bit diagonally. That's not gonna make a huge difference to be honest, but I don't know, I just kind of noticed it. If we have a look at the port as well, you can see it's completely flat to the board, which is exactly what we wanted. Also, here's the reason why I like doing the drop-in. Look at the anchor points. Look how solid these are all the way through. We did have to touch the back ones up a little bit, but again, just completely solid. You can see here as well, it looks a little bit wonky. We've got more port over here than we do on this side. Again, don't think that positioning is massively gonna affect the case. Whilst we've got the board out of the housing let's give it a real quick test and see if it works okay wait a minute we get 5.2 volts at 0 0.01 amps i'm pretty sure that's meant to be 15 volts straight off the bat let me test the other side and see if we get the same but we get nothing this side what about a wiggle no nothing nothing at all i don't think that's the charging port. I think that's the M92 T36 chip on the back of the board that we checked for shorts in the first place. Whilst we're here, I'm gonna check for shorts again. We've got no shorts at all. It can be common for an M92 to not show any uh, short symptoms, but be faulty. So let's get this off and replace it with another one. Tiny bit of flux to get it off. 450 degrees Celsius at 50%. Drop of flux, leaded solder now to lower the melting temperature. Little blob in the middle as well. Perfect. Tiny bit more flux. Preheat the board a little bit. Place the chip on. Very shaky today. Try and get it in place. There or thereabouts, perfect. Hold, and then air back on. Air off. Tiny bit more flux just so we can get the neat finish. And now just round with the iron. Now for a clean and check our work. Quickly check all the sides. That seems good. That seems good. Good. And good. Now, was it the port or was it the M92 T36 chip? Let's have a look, here we go, ready? In. Do we still have five volts? No, we have 15 volts and 0.10 amps. Exactly what we wanna see and I think it's just kind of booted, that's why the amperage has just dropped. Let's check the other side. Are we cooking? Good looking. 14.8 volts and do we go up to 0 0.10? We are up 0 0.07, I think that is fine, 0 0.08, nine. Hey, uh, you're just trolling me now, but I think that is generally fine, but it's not confirmed just yet. We're gonna quickly swap out the Joy-Cons. This is one of them, and the other one was just buried underneath a board here. Mission complete so far. We just now need to Dremel this back down to the board. And here we have it nice and flat with the board. We just need to get all the metal shards out of it now. That's gonna be fun. Toothbrush with some IPA. Just cleaned it out. How does it look now? Yeah, a lot better. Maybe a little bit more of a clean to get those shards out of the bottom. You see them? Down here on the left, you've got loads at the bottom. Just another quick clean. And here we have the finished product. Now, please don't hate on me because I have the black analog sticks instead of the white ones to go with every single other button. They're the only ones I had. But regardless, it looks fantastic. The screen came out really, really well after giving it a good clean. And the rest of the device, again, I've just given a quick clean and it looks perfect. We have a few scratches on the back because of the age of the console, but we can't really help that. Do we get what we want, which is a charge on both sides? That fits the port very, very nicely, that's good. Yes, the screen works 100%. As you can see from the battery charging symbol, we are drawing 0.11 amps, so 100 milliamps. 
and 14.8 volts, that is perfect. On the flip side, do we get the same? 0 0.5, there we go, 100 milliamps and 14.8 volts, and supposedly, yes, there we go, the battery symbol. I've just left my grub marks on the screen. I've just managed to calibrate the sticks and they seem fine. We have touchscreen, which is awesome, and everything seems to be working, and there is no parental control. This one was definitely a win. Current listings for a Switch Lite on eBay seem to be around about 90 to 100 pounds, meaning profit before any deductions will be about 55 pounds. Two analog sticks, a charging port, and an M92 chip will cool 10 to 15 pounds, depending on where you get it from. After eBay fees, etc., we're looking at a profit of around about 35 to 40 pounds, roughly, which is a nice little win and some great practice. If you like me fixing Nintendo Switch lights, you can find another video where I do that right here. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Let's go.